So this little demonstration is for Mandy, and she wanted to have a little countdown timer on her PowerPoint that would have a, allow the people in her presentation to have a little discussion period, uh, but then be able to wrangle them back through the use of a timer. So I'm going to set this up for 10 minutes on my website. I'll have one that's set for 30 minutes that you could download and you could modify more easily just by deleting um, some of the little tidbits out of here. But I'm going to make it just 10 minutes during this video so that you can see the fundamentals of how it works. So I just open up PowerPoint and I'm going to change my layout to a blank. And I found a nice uh, alarm clock image that I am just going to copy and paste into here. So I like this image. I thought it, you know, got the point across that this was a timer. So of course, this is just a number on here. It has nothing to do with the time of day or anything. It's just a number. So we want this to be our countdown, or you could also make this a count up just by reordering the little um, shapes that I'm going to be making. So I'm going to go to shapes. I'm going to choose a rectangle. I'm going to draw a little rectangle in here. Get it about the right place. And I'll use my arrow keys to just scooch it a little bit. And I'll change the color. And I'll change the shape outline. And now you'll see it blends in and matches the clock quite well. So now if I right click on this, I can edit the text. And I will just type 10 because I'm going to start at 10 minutes and be counting down. If you wanted to count up, um, you'd probably start at zero. Alrighty, so I'm going to make the font a little bigger. And of course, you'll modify this however you want so that it looks right. That looks fine to me. And I'm going to make it red so it sort of gets back to that alarm clock idea. And I'm going to go to my drawing tools and format and add a little glow, a little text effect, effect of a glow around this. And I'll just uh, do a little bit of gold, five point gold. And that's fine. Okay, so there's my very first uh, time. So now I'm just going to move this up out of the way. And I'm going to copy it. And then I'm going to paste it nine times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I'm going to just put this one down over here. And I'm just going to move this clock out of the way for a little bit. We'll come back to that. Just wanted to show you where we were going. And I'm going to select all of these. You can see I just drew a square around that. If you don't do that very often, that's a really nice way to select all the objects at one time. And then I'm just going to distribute them vertically. Okay. And then I'm going to distribute them. Oops horizontally. So this is on the drawing tools format in the arrange group. Alrighty, so now they're all spread out. You see they're all tens. So if this one's 10, the one beneath it would be nine. So this is how many minutes are left, right? Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Oh goodness, I need one more because I need it to be zero. So I'll control C and control V. And now it's on the top. So I want the zero to be at the back. So if you're familiar with this, we're going to go to drawing tools and format. And we're going to say send to the back and that puts it behind all of the elements. Okay, so now it also puts it behind our clock, which we don't want. So now I'm going to select our clock and I'm going to say send that to the back. And now the clock is behind all of the numbers. Okay, uh, the other thing we're going to need is a little start button. So let's come back to our insert and our shape. We'll choose a little rectangle again. And I'll just draw a little rectangle, right click, edit text, and we'll put start. All right. And we'll make that font bigger. 
we might have to make that smaller over time. We'll see how that goes. Um, and so what would we want this to look like? Well, maybe we want the inside to be sort of a gray. Um, and we could make the font color instead of red, we'll make it green. Eh. And then we'll put that glow on it as well. Make it stand out a little bit. And I'll put the glow on it so it kind of gets this little glow. And you can see that that looks not like a button at all. I'm going to format my shape using Drawing Tools, Format, and Shape Effects to bevel it. I'll make it look like a button. And then most important is I'll do this 3D rotation and I'll pick one that kind of looks like it would fit right on top of my alarm clock. So I'm just resizing it to get it to fit the way I want. Maybe I need to make it a little bit smaller. Who knows, maybe I would have made my alarm clock bigger. It's all up to you what you would want. Um, just so it looks like a little button here. And that's great. We want to make sure that it doesn't blend in too much with the image so that the person using this knows exactly how they're going to begin this animation because that's what comes next. Okay, so here's our next part. We're just going to do a little bit of animation. It's super easy to do. Um, and that's what's going to make our clock come alive. So we're going to start with this start button. We're going to go to the animations ribbon. And in the animation group, I'm going to drop down and just apply a color pulse. Okay, And you don't see anything right now because my clock was off the screen, but that's okay. Just trust me, it'll be just swell. So we're going to start our next animation. Um, it is going to be a disappear. We're going to make it go away. Uh, we're going to make the 10 go away. So uh, for the sample I have for you, on my website, which is sandymcveigh.com, uh, there's a link somewhere in the notes here. You'll be able to get rid of 30, 29, 28, whatever, down to the minutes that you want, or you could reorder it so that it counts up if you would prefer. But I'm going to choose an exit of just disappear. Okay. So now I'm going to open the animation pane over here on the right hand side, and this is where it gets not at all tricky, but where some people don't know how it works. So the first one, which is our start button, will start on a click. We don't want us to have that start as soon as the slide loads because we may want to be introducing this group work conversation and we don't want to start the timer until we're ready. But once we start the timer, we want it just to run itself. So when we click the start button, we want that disappear to happen. So we're going to click the drop down and we're going to say that we're going to start this one, the exit after previous, so after the click, and then we're going to adjust the timing. So there's a delay of 60 seconds, one minute. Okay. So if you want it to do your um, timing to be longer and you wanted something to fade away, you can make it after 300 seconds and then it would be after five minutes. Okay, so here we go. So now we're going to apply this same effect of disappear to the next object and we'll set the timing. But the difference here is we're going to say it's after previous. With the first one we said with previous. So as soon as we click that start button that timer starts. If we say start after previous, it'll be after the first rectangle goes away. And we'll go to the timing. And we'll set that for 60 seconds. Okay. So now here's where if there is any magic to this, it comes in. I'm going to select... this second timing and I'm going to come to the animation ribbon and double click the animation painter that'll stick it on if you only click the animation painter once it'll work for one click 
but we're going to apply this several times. So it doesn't matter whether you have eight more or 29 more. It doesn't matter. I'm just going to click each of these one at a time. Really don't care about the preview that keeps wanting to automatically start. <laughs> and you'll see that we have this nice long list of everything playing, all based on that one click. So I'm going to turn off the animation painter. So now I'm going to click my start button and hold down my shift key and grab my alarm clock and bring that to the middle of my slide. And then I could try and do that dragging method to select all of my other tiles, or I'm just holding down the shift key and clicking them all because it was just as easy. And I'm going to now arrange these. So I'm going to arrange them and I'm going to align them to the center. And then I'm also going to align them to the middle. And now they're in one big group that I can place right on top of my timing. And if I need to, I can use my arrow keys to move it around just a tiny bit. And let's play and see how this will look. So I'm going to hit my slideshow button. There's my timer. And I give my introduction about, you know, um, we're going to have our group session here to talk, and I'm going to start, and so you're going to have to just bear with me for a minute. Uh, by the way, my website is sandymcvey.com, S-A-N-D-Y-M-C-V-E-Y.com, and you can download this PowerPoint uh, timer for 30 minutes, and then you could just adjust it to what you need to be. I'm just talking for a moment so that you can see that it will automatically go to nine minutes after a minute has elapsed. Uh, I hope you take the opportunity to subscribe to my YouTube channel and you can also ask me questions if there are things that you'd like to do with Word or Excel or PowerPoint or any of the Google tools like Google Websites or Google Drive. I would be happy to do a video response for you. I really enjoy little challenges from my subscribers and appreciate your time. And now that proves that the animation works. So thanks a lot and have a great day.